Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with a Mr. Zosin. So today we're taking a look at a very interesting operating system. It's called Essence, uh, right? And what I find interesting about this operating system, not only it looks good, right? So you can take a look at these screenshots and actually confirm for yourself that it looks pretty modern, uh, right? So not like super modern, but you know, it, it's decent. I, I would use this kind of operating system today, but it's also not a POSIX operating system. You would think it's, oh, maybe it's some sort of a like Linux distro or yet another POSIX clone. No, 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 no. It's not POSIX operating system. It's created from scratch and it's trying to do its own thing. And that's what caught my attention. This is what caught my attention, right? And like, this is the reason why I like things like, for example, Temple OS, uh, because like Serenity, no, 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 Serenity OS is not trying to do its own thing. As far as I know, it's basically recreating POSIX, isn't it? But it's putting some stuff on top of POSIX, yes, for sure, but it's kind of still recreating, it's, it's a Unix-like operating system, right? So, and like, I mean, no disrespect to Serenity OS and Andreas Kling and what he's doing, but from my perspective, perspective, what he's doing is basically recreating the existing mess that we already have. Software is a mess and it's a mess for a reason, right? Because we have abstraction layers, compatibility layers and stuff like that. And for me, recreation of programming, like for me personally, it's a way to escape that mess and try something else. Like imagine, what if we had an opportunity to not support something like or maybe try a different model or w whatever like a different ux how would it look like so and i don't see much point in rec in recreating existing software stack mess in a recreational manner i'm not saying that andrew king shouldn't do that like it and it's actually very fucking impressive like what he's doing is an insanely impressive and i actually completely support what he's doing because on top of just doing this very technical difficult and technical thing he's also building a community he's also engaging people right it's it's obviously fun i'm just saying that for me personally it's kind of less interesting than trying out something new like in case of temple os or essence Right. So absolute love was Andreas Kling is doing. And maybe at some point we're going to actually do a Serenity OS stream. I already did Serenity OS stream, by the way, but it was a long time ago. Right. Uh, so and not that many people. So we we'll already have a lot of new people on the channel. So a lot of people don't remember that Serenity OS stream. So maybe I'm going to do another one. And on that Serenity OS stream that didn't survive. No, no, no. It's not on YouTube. It was actually before I was archiving things on YouTube. Yeah unfortunately so and on that uh, 70 OS stream i actually uh, like developed a uh, game of life right so i just like built serenity os and i build an application for that operating system and just play with it and it was actually kind of fun like i really enjoyed it so yeah <clears throat> anyway essence so um you can find the uh the the website and the um, source code of this entire thing here i'm gonna copy paste it in the chat and for people on youtube it's gonna be in the description uh right so and <clears throat> yeah let's go ahead and take a look at this entire thing it's actually pretty simple i already downloaded the source code and already built it right it builds um around so the documentation says documentation says that it will take around 20 minutes on a modern computer for me it took almost an hour but because uh i'm using an old uh laptop like 10 years old laptop right so and what's funny is that while building it's actually downloading um gcc and first builds a specific version of gcc from scratch and then builds the operating system with that specific version of gcc which kind of reminds me what i so in Serenity OS as well, for some reason, Serenity OS also uses very specific version of the compiler and builds with a very specific version of the compiler. Um, so non C++, I think it's a C++. I think this entire thing is written in C++ if I'm not mistaken. Um, right. And maybe it is actually very common in uh, operating system development, right? So maybe different compilers have different quirks and stuff like that and maybe it is important for operating system development i never actually developed an operating system i do plan 
to, to do that, right? People keep asking me when I'm going to do operating system development. It's coming, uh, right? At some point, I'm going to do that. I just need to finish some of my other projects. Right. So it was downloading uh, GCC and building this from scratch and also um, building the operating system. So the way you build that, you actually have a start script, right? So what you have to do, you have to just call a start script. So let's actually go here, um, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So team ux. So and uh, so this is a start. Uh, I, I wonder how much time it will take. Mm. So because we're also streaming, right? Uh, it, it didn't take that much time. So it actually uh, like uh, shows you a prompt where you can uh, issue different commands. Um, and one of the commands you can do is just like build the entire thing or run it with QEMO and stuff like that, right? And if you take a look at this start script, it's actually rather interesting. It consists of a single line. It consists of a single line. So the first thing it does, it identifies your directory, then makes a bin directory and stuff like that. And then it builds something rather peculiar. It builds utilscript.c, right, into build script. Okay, and afterwards it runs the script. And with this, it, it builds some sort of an interpreter for some sort of language. It's, people say it's like, no, it's actually way cooler. Build system is written in its own scripting language and an interpreter of the scripting language is part of the source code of the project. It's even cooler than Nob. Right, because Nob is the library and you make an executable, but this is like, it's written in a different language, but the interpreter also part of the, of the thing and it's a custom interpreter. Right, so uh, we can take a look at all of these things, right? So if you take a look at the script.c, uh, uh, what we can see, we freaking see it like tokenizer. Like, this is the first thing we see. We see a tokenizer. It's literally, uh, it's literally an interpreter. Token, tokenizer, scope. <laughs> this is so freaking funny. It, it's literally an interpreter and it's like, oh my God, it's, it's a legit interpreter. Eight, exactly 8,000 lines of code. Exactly 8,000 lines of code. Holy shit. I love it. Like, I love this project. Right? It's, it's actually quite rare when a project can make me excited. Uh, right. But every time I look at any next project, it's actually so fucking cool. Right. So it's a gold mine of different cool things. Uh, so, and that's why I say the, that this developer is extremely underappreciated. Like, I have no idea why. Uh, right. So these days on the internet, what you have to do, you just have to react to a bunch of like uh, other videos or some articles and get popular. But if you sit down and do actual cool shit, nobody gives a fuck. It's a fucking tragedy. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you. So anyway, so this is how the scripting language looks like. Uh, right. So I don't really have a highlighting for all of that. Maybe I'm enable it like a C or something like that. Um, right. So and it, yeah, it's actually C like. Not really see like like syntactically, like it doesn't have these parentheses and stuff like that. Damn, that's a pretty sexy language. Yo, it's like a better. Is that a better C or something? What the fuck? And so the build system itself is rather big. So it does a lot of different things, right? So primarily it copies files, download things, and so on and so forth. So it's actually super cool. Anyway, uh, maybe one day we're gonna go into that, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. So anyway, uh, so if you want to like, I really recommend after the stream, watch the video by Next, uh, where they presented uh, the operating system, October 20, 21st, 2021st, I suppose, right? So it was some time ago, right? But this demo is actually still relevant. Uh, they explain the concept of SNSOS, like, like how, like what's the uh, the UX decision behind all of that. So it's actually really cool. I really recommend watching this video. We're not going to be watching it today. Um, right. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, actually start it. I wonder if I can do K. Uh, will it actually do? Yeah. So it starts building and we'll actually start QEMO. The essence of Essence OS. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll get some subs. Thank you so much. Um, Ormus Baxter for T1 subscription and Utox39. Thank you so much as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate that. So it's getting some time. Um, so maybe what we're gonna do today, we're also gonna do the same thing I did in Serenity. Maybe we're gonna write an application for this operating system. Uh, it, apparently, I looked, um, you know, around the source code, and apparently, it's super easy to add your own. 
uh, application. So it's rather slow. Uh, when I was not streaming, it was a little bit faster, right? So because some of the resources on my laptop are taken by the streaming, so. Mm -mm. Is the creator's uh, name even by any chance? I have no idea what's their name, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. Maybe it's written somewhere in some of the profiles, but I didn't really pay attention, right? So usually, usually uh, when I like look up stuff by people on the internet, I rarely care about their specific names, right? <clears throat> Get himself ordered Ray Lib to be launched, but why? Like, people, you, you don't fucking understand. Like, Yet another fetishization of APIs and libraries and shit like that. I'm not using Raylib for the sake of Raylib. Ra I use Raylib because it solves a very specific problem on uh, the modern operating system that we have. Right. It's a very convenient boilerplate of the code that I would have written myself. Right. So what's interesting is that some platforms simply don't have that problem that is addressed by Rayleigh. Namely, for example, TempleOS doesn't have that uh, that problem. Because of that, running Rayleigh on TempleOS doesn't make any fucking sense. You can just use TempleA uh, like OS API. You can you can just use TempleOS. The same thing with the Essence, right? So it I'm, I'm pretty sure it has a pretty good graphical API from what I saw. So like you don't need Rayleigh in here. Like stop fetishization of languages and libraries like i'm not using things for the sake of using them like i don't understand this culture i will never understand this culture uh like it's something alien to me uh right i use things because they solve specific technical problems and i also recommend you to do that right otherwise you're not really a software developer in my eyes at least so anyways uh so this is a um, essence os right so and what's interesting is that from that video, uh, right, that I show you there, Next actually said that you don't really start applications. You first open windows and then within a window, you decide what kind of applications you want to run in there. So, and what's interesting is that this is the window manager, right? So this is basically the window manager and a window manager allows you to create tabs, right? So here I have two tabs and uh, none of the applications are currently running in these two tabs. Can I actually separate them? I, I can separate them. So these tabs actually act similarly to how uh, Chrome... Yeah. So again, guys, this shit was written from fucking scratch. Again. Like, I'm, when I'm saying that Next is uh, underappreciated, I fucking mean it. I don't say things like that for, like, for no reason. And it has a, like a beautiful design and stuff like that. I'm just saying. Uh, can it actually like do? Oh, 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 for fuck's sake! It can even do tiling. Fucking sh oh my god! You can even tile this like in in Windows, right? So you you basically snap them. Uh, what if I do that on a? Uh, it's actually full screen. That's it's fine. Uh, that's so fucking cool. All right. So anyway, so you can actually do these kind of things. Um, so let's actually do full screen. My mouse has died again for some reason, so I really apologize for that. Uh, eh. So, and what we can have in here, we can have a file manager, right? So, and you can have files, so there's some settings and stuff like that, nothing particularly special. Uh, right, so there's also 2048, uh, which we can also play. Let's actually play it a little bit. So you can already do gaming on this operating system, right? So you can play games and shit. Uh, how about that? Games and shit. Uh, all right. So uh, that's pretty cool. So what else can you have? Um, so image editor, POSIX launcher. Even though it is not an, uh, like a POSIX operating system, it has a compatibility with POSIX. As far as I know, yeah, it, it doesn't work for me, right? So you have to recompile it with a specific flag. I wonder if I can actually show you if I do something like this, yeah. So essentially, this application depends on the POSIX subsystem to enable it to use the POSIX subsystem, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that will probably require to recompile the entire thing. It actually takes some time, so I'm probably not gonna do it right now. Uh, right, so what kind of other applications we have? Like, we have a text editor, by the way. Um, right, and as far as I know, let's actually make the font a little bit bigger, not really that big. And it has a little bit of a highlighting for 
different, not really for different, for, for now it has a highlighting for C and C++ and in Ni, right? So you can actually like write some code in here if you want to within that operating system. <laughs> I don't know if you can compile things in here, uh, right? So, but you can definitely save some stuff, right? So it, it actually saved it in here, but I can't really, uh, I can actually open this stuff and yeah, so here is the text file. So we can create the text file and whatnot. Uh, so that's pretty cool, um, right? But I didn't see how can you like uh, compile this entire thing. Unfortunately, how can you compile this entire thing? So maybe what you have to do, you have to use like like a postix launcher and whatnot, um, right? So and it's like not finished. Obviously, this entire thing is not really finished, right? Uh, and uh, next, unfortunately, doesn't really work on that operating system anymore. The last changes were like nine months ago. So as far as I know, they're kind of busy with their work, with their life and stuff like that. So this is sort of like a side project, but it's a very cool side project. Like it has a very huge potential. Uh, right. So, and you know what would be cool? It would be cool to kind of maybe, as I already said, write some sort of a, like um, uh, application for it. No, Terminal, I think Terminal is available in the POSIX subsystem, right? So again, the operating system is not a POSIX one. The terminal is a very much POSIX y thing, right? So because of that, I think it's in the POSIX launcher. We can try to maybe enable it and see how much time it takes to actually rebuild it. Oh, let's go ahead and do that. Why not? So I think the longest thing in the entire process was um, building GCC. So since I already have built GCC, maybe rebuilding the whole operating system with a different configuration is not going to take that much time. So let's actually do config. Uh, and uh, what can we do in there? Holy sh it has like a GUI, like a TK thingy. Is that coming from, is that coming from his scripting language or something like that? Damn, this is so fucking cool. This is so unconventional. This is like, okay, can I search for some things? Uh, right, so there's a flag, enable POSIX. Okay, so I can say yes, I can save this entire thing and I can close the configuration and I can do K. Oh, and it will probably, oh, it is building it's building BusyBox. Holy fucking shit. It's going to be using BusyBox to create. Oh my fucking goodness. <gasps> All right. I don't really know how much time it will take. So um, yeah. So while it's doing its thing, maybe we're going to do a little bit of a, you know, Q&A session or something like that. Already better than NixOS. I, I don't know, probably. The, the cool thing about this entire build system is that it downloads the third-party dependencies and builds them, right? So this is what it was doing when I first ran it. It is already lagging. I don't really see any laggage, uh, right? Is it is it really lagging? Maybe. So I don't really know. So uh, yeah. So when I first ran it, this is what it was doing with GCC. Um, right. It downloaded specific version of GCC. It's built it, and now it's doing that for. So it doesn't download all of the. Uh, dependencies, right? Some of the dependencies I had to, it's, it's already actually building, like compiling the operating system. So it built uh, BusyBox. So I think it's gonna actually start soon. LibBB. LibBB. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, why it takes so much? Because it's a serious big project, obviously. Uh, that's why. Oh, lib busy box. So BB is a busy box. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. So you can use busy box as a library? That's actually very interesting. I thought busy box is um, executable, right? It's a single executable that acts like different core utilities depending on uh, what kind of sim link you create for that thing. Um, isn't installing POSIX cheating? Uh, cheating is a violation of rules. What are the rules? Um, I don't get it. What are the rules? Mm -mm. So, mm -mm -mm -mm. did you try Red Debugger? Uh, but I think it is only for Windows. No, I never tried it precisely because it's only for Windows. Uh, if it finally, you know, gets released on Linux, I definitely will try it. But I don't know. Is it is it paid or is it not? Is it free? 
uh right so i if, i'm pretty sure if it's paid i won't be able to pay for it right so because none of the paying options are available for me um so yeah okay so it was not that hard it was not that long fortunately 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 uh, uh -huh. so let's take a look so if we try to uh this is not what i wanted to run just a second so po poisix launcher there we go oh it's <laughs> The prompt is kind of funny. The prompt is kind of funny. Okay, so can I, uh, can I do some stuff? Okay, so I can do application. And yeah, so it's kind of... Can I edit it in here? Right. So it's understandable. Again, the operating system is not really finished. Uh, that's very interesting. I press Control c and it showed this pop-up. Damn. That is sexy. Right. So again, POSIX is kind of an alien concept for Essence. That's why it's probably a little bit inconvenient. But I suppose Nax didn't really work on it that much, right? So you can you can do some POSIX stuff if you need to, right? So POSIX is like wine for, for Linux in here, right? So it's only for like backward capabilities and, and stuff. Uh, so especially if you have some grid. I wonder if you can do CC. Uh, how are you for real, bro? Did you did you fucking see that? That is funny. <laughs> out of memory, it couldn't run CC because it ran out of memory. <laughs> I mean, the uh, the virtual machine probably doesn't have enough memory or something like that. Uh, this is so freaking cool. <laughs> can I do GCC? Yeah, out of memory. How can I increase the memory? Like. Is there any way for me to actually see how much memory I even have in here? Uh, so if I take a look at the system monitor, uh, so we have a memory tab in here, uh, fixed heap allocation, fixed heap graphical allocation, um, leak one, there are buttons to leak some memory. Is that for testing purposes? Is that for testing purposes? This is actually funny. <laughs> Uh, so the, we have some maximum okay so let me actually maybe increase the size a little bit for everyone because it's kind of interesting what do we have in here um graphic surface heap normal size uh fixed heap total size uh maximum object cache size maybe this is how much memory we have in here um it doesn't really tell us commit limit i suppose this is a one gig of memory right so we have one gig of memory so gcc needs more than one gig of memory to operate or something like that is that what's going on maybe it was just trying to prelocate like a huge uh chunk of memory like some sort of like a region into which it's going to be allocating things and it couldn't because it's just like doesn't fit into the memory of, of this thing so i don't really know what's going on so uh let me see maybe is there a gcc maybe no there is no such thing if I do take a look at which CC, so which out of memory, huh? Oh, it says out of memory on any of these things. That is very interesting. So LS is fine, but if I try to do something, okay. Why does it say out of memory? So uh, maybe the, the POSIX launcher app has a limited memory assigned to it. Uh, right, maybe, maybe it does. Like, I don't really know how to maybe give it more memory uh the right click doesn't work so we can take a look at how much so i have two um hypotheses is that maybe so it starts a separate sh process and separate sh process just doesn't fit in there and ls minus l is probably built some sort of built in into this thing right so we can try to maybe increase the amount of memory used by the emulator but we need to find maybe there is some sort of an option that allows us to increase the amount of memory so let's actually go ahead and see if we can do that so i'm going to shut down this entire thing maybe check u limit too uh, i'm pretty sure i won't be able to actually run it in here um okay so maybe it's somewhere in the configuration right open local config editor uh maybe there are some other things so we have building debug uh, search and replace utilities designer to open oh you can have an interface designer in here this is actually super cool so i'm gonna make an assumption that maybe it's somewhere in the config let's start the config and see uh what kind of 
stuff with memory in megabytes. Okay, uh, so that's what it is. What if I actually give you two megabytes? Right. Um, yeah, let's actually give it uh, two megabytes and see maybe that will increase it. Uh, price. There is also primary drive. Right, so this is some sort of a primary drive. And I suppose this is not the memory. So memory MB is probably like a RAM. Um, yeah, okay. So I'll just save it and let's try to run it one more time. Is there any way to just run it without rebuilding it? Uh, it looks like it just always run it. Uh, so because it, it feels like it's always built. It. Yeah, it feels like it's always built. It. Just in case. Um, more RAM than a hard drive. Yeah, exactly. I hope it's not gonna kill my entire stream, by the way. I really hope so. Uh, it may. It actually may. All right. Um, isn't it megabytes? So would be two gig. Yeah. So I give it two gigabytes. Why not? Uh, so why not give it two megabytes? I think we can afford two gigabytes of RAM in twenty twenty four. Why not? Uh, mm -hmm. Have you tried to extend C lang? Yes, I did. I did that with TCC specifically. I added uh, basically downloading of the headers when you include them. So one of the things I did, uh, I did that if you include with HTTPS, it will actually download that header and include it. So this is one of the things I did long time ago. There's even a video about that, but I forgot where it's where is the link for that video. So I really apologize for that. Uh, please check the script console. Uh, the script console. Okay, so I will check it out. Um, I saw a POSIX folder in application. Maybe it has apps in there. Yeah, well, I mean, the applications that I was running, 200, uh, 2048 and File Manager, they are the this application. They are located in the application folder. Yeah, libcurl stream. It's a libcurl stream. Um, I thought you were naturally avoiding it. No, it because I know this is the applications, right? So that you run for in the in essence. Based next stream, exactly. So I think we're ready. Eh fuck. Shit, fuck. Damn. Alright, so uh, let's go into the matrix. What do we have? So uh, people ask me to check the script console. Uh what the fuck is this shit? <gasps> Couldn't find inside its scope. Can I? How do I use that? What is the script console? You broke it. I don't know how to use it. So int x10. Okay. Uh, no, it, none of this work. This is actually really bad, I think. At least the help command should work. At least the help command should work. When you are designing like a prompt uh, application, right? When you design a prompt application, you have to make sure that some sort of a help command works and prints you something like H, uh, help. N none of that work. Because again, I tried different things. Uh, it's impossible to get some help that will explain you how to use this thing. So it's like, unfortunately, this is a bad design. Uh, I'll like subtract points from that. I'll definitely subtract point for that. Anyways, so if I try to do this kind of stuff, so what if I do CC? Still out of memory. Still out of memory. So uh, yeah, maybe it just reports a thing incorrectly. What I'm thinking is that maybe the command is missing. I think the command is missing. I think it is using a wrong error no code to describe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think it's, it's a wrong message. So that's what's going on in here. It's not really out of memory, is that it's using, uh, you know, a wrong error message. That happened to me way too often, honestly, when I was developing in C. <laughs> that happened to me way too often. Anyway, so let's actually try to write some stuff for this operating system. I don't know. Uh, I think that would be interesting. 
so all of the applications right so all of the applications they are located in the apps folder and here are their source code so as you can see 2048 uh, is basically two files a cpp and a new file i suppose a new file contains metadata yeah it is metadata so name uh, use a single instance so you can have several instances i have no idea what is an instance then you specify the path to the source code and you have embed so you can actually have some resources and stuff like that so how an application for an essence operating system looks like this file uh, is a part of the essence operating system this is licensed under a term of mit license c license written by next okay that's cool so you include essence.h i suppose it's kind of similar to windows.h right uh, shared string so it has like its own standard library and stuff like that tile course D damn right damn and people tell me bro you need to run Rayleap in this thing look this thing has its own shit that doesn't require Rayleap or anything like that so where is the main does it have a main uh oh it has a start okay so this is probably I'm gonna just assume that this is probably the entry point for uh, for the application so you have to initialize it you have es buffers uh so then you can damn so settings file you read an entirety of the settings file into the bu buffer into the bytes of the buffer and then you probably parse it or something like that and the settings file is it defined somewhere where is it defined okay this is the path schema oh yeah it's since it's its own operating system it probably has its own path schema right so you, you have some something called bar and i suppose like this is a settings and within the settings you have like a default dot that and, and this is kind of interesting actually do like all of the applications have their own sort of like a file system like a virtual file system because like this is hard coded right so when I say settings, it's probably settings for that specific application or something like that. That's probably what it is. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. I really like that. Um, so then you you have specific functions for the buffers that reads chunk of the of the buffer. You read high score. You read the score. Uh, then you read the buffer into some grid and stuff like that. Then you free it, and then you have a loop oh my god it's event based i mean i mean what did they expect like all of the google applications event based i suppose right so you have an infinite loop and you receive messages you receive messages and you process those messages and then yeah it's, it's kind of windows uh right so it's kind of it's kind of like windows okay 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 so you set an icon yeah there you go uh you create a panel and so, yeah so this is a manual gui right and it's not an immediate ui right so it's not the immediate ui as you can see we are creating the tree we are creating the tree so it's retained gui so we first create the tree of this thing and then we give it to event loop well i mean we are organizing the event loop effectively uh, right so but we then let the system to send that messages and process them and what kind of messages you have you also have an application exit uh, save configuration right so you can save the configuration this is pretty straightforward like I can just read that I don't even need documentation or anything like that it's like yeah it's it's very much straightforward uh, that's so fucking cool <laughs> uh, anyways so do you have uh, like some sort of a example so there's samples um, so game loop hello okay so let's actually take and hello is written in c look at that so you can actually write in c plus plus and c which makes sense right why not so uh here um you have a hello and stuff like that so hello okay let's see um we're not using the c standard library so we need to initialize global constructors manually oh so that's why we do that global aha uh -huh okay so that's that's very interesting okay okay so you have an infinite loop and what's funny is that you don't really have an exit condition well in reality you kind of do so weren't we receiving the exit message somewhere uh i think we were receiving the exit message let me actually take a look super quick so in in here when we were processing application messages one of the messages was um application exit but the only thing we did is just save configuration and nothing else so where is the save configuration yeah so we just save configuration i suppose 
um, the applications are killed forcefully. I think that's what it is, right? It, usually in, in POSIX, right, in Unix, it's the application that says, okay, I'm going to exit, and that's why they call in the exit syscall. So here, I suppose it's the user who closes the application, and the message is sent as just a notification. It's just a notification, bruh, you're about to get killed, do, do all of your stuff, save all of your configs, and get the fuck out of here. So you don't even have to do anything, right? So it, it will kill you automatically. It will just unload you anyway. It, it just basically tells you, the user requested to kill you. I'm sorry. Here's some time. Do some stuff, right? So this is actually pretty cool. I really appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, application can probably try to exit. Maybe there is some sort of like an exit call. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. In this model, how the system knows when to do the kill? When the user pressed the, the X on the window. When the user pressed the X, this is how operating system knows, okay, this application has to go. This application has to go. <clears throat> uh, so, Yusu, Yusu, Yusu. Mm, all right. Um, so how does it actually know when it's ready to be killed? That's a very interesting question. Maybe receive message. This is my hypothesis, by the way. I don't really know how Essence work. But if I were to make this system, how would I do that? I probably would make message receive kind of block a little bit. Or I would use it as a essentially an indicator that the application waits for the next message and that's when it is time for me to kill the application probably so essentially when i received um message ex when i sent to the application message exit i would wait for its next message receive and upon receiving its message receive request only then i would kill them which has a very interesting implication what if i never call message receive after receiving message application exit <laughs> i don't fucking know <laughs> like what would you do in that case um, um maybe after some timeout uh, who freaking knows like i, I don't really know <laughs> um but to be fair like what would you even do so what if you exit out of stuff there's so many questions like and we don't even know how to develop for this shit yet so uh right so let me let me see um so this is a hello right so this is a hello and uh yeah so here we receive the message then we do create we don't even handle message exit right so because again uh we have nothing to save or like to do after we're done with this entire thing so the system wants us to create an instance of our application Call instance create with a message and application name. Instance of our application. I remember hearing that word before. In the configuration, at least in the configuration of this thing, it was saying use a single instance. So that means there are applications with several instances. An instance is something that you create yourself manually, apparently. I wonder if it is basically a window. Maybe the application that can have there maybe there are applications that can have several windows over several tabs or something like that. I can see that. Um, why not call it window then? Because maybe it's not really a window, right? It could be also a tab. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think we're going to discover that at some point. Uh, so create a text display with the hello world message, right? So you do uh, text create. Okay. So an instance has a window, right? So window is a part of the instance because of that instance is not necessarily a window. Uh, at the text display, I wonder if instance is sort of like a process. What if the multi-processing in this operating system is just like several instances like i don't know i'm just speaking out of my ass uh i'm just you know confabulating shit like a crazy chat gpt model that's what i'm doing so add the text display to the instance um the text display should fill the window right so you specify that use the window background style okay so pass minus one as a zero terminated string ah oh ooh, okay so this is a pointer to the string and this is the size of the string but if you have a string that is null terminated you pass minus one and it just assumes that the string is null terminated it supports both guys 
an operating system that supports both styles of strings i think win api also does support like both styles of strings for some like uh win api calls uh right but i don't quite remember i'm not the windows developer honestly i would take this kind of operating system over windows anytime i i want to install it like uh, on actual hardware on some old laptop or something like that if i can develop from this operating system without the host operating system i wouldn't mind using it for recreation programming imagine having a simplistic operating system like that somewhere in the woods in a cabin uh, and only have a compiler and do recreation programming for your soul something like a open bsd carmack style I, th I think carmack actually did this session where he went to like completely isolated himself with a like open bsd source code and just like did open D bsd development or something like that D didn't i think it was carmack right so i think i think it was him All right so um and yeah, so I'd like to do something like that with the essence. That would be kind of cool. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, so all of that looks pretty straightforward. But the question is, how do I even fucking create this thing? Because I didn't think I have... Uh, I didn't see hello application in there. I wonder if I can do something like this. Right, so I'm going to do hello. But, but the thing about this application is that it says that source in, is in the sample. So maybe... Um, I will have to change it like that. And the question, it, w question is, will it pick it up? Uh, will it actually pick it up? So let's actually see. Uh, let's actually see. Mm -mm. So what we need is an OS that you can recompile while running. Uh, I think it is possible in Tepl OS. I think you, you can basically recompile parts of the operating system while it is running. So technically, nothing really stops you except your own skill to recompile the entirety of Temple OS while you're running it, right? So if you can't do that, that is obviously a skill issue, right? So you probably don't know how to do that. Where's the progress bar? You don't need the progress bar. You have a spinning thingy. Who needs a progress bar if you have a spinning thingy? We we. <clears throat> You can do this with FreeBSD too. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I don't know really. I don't really know anything about FreeBSD. Progress bar is bloat, mate. It's a bloat. Mm. Why it stops spinning in Zoom? Because the Zoom utility doesn't really update in real time. What it does, it makes a screenshot and zooms in on a screenshot. I actually kind of prefer it like that because. Uh, I sometimes use it to stop some specific animation and look at specific pixels and stuff like that. So it's not really zooming in, it's actually taking a picture and zooming in on the picture. Mm -mm. Um, that's what it is. That's what it is. Huh. So that's a pretty... That's a pretty interesting development uh, loop. You know what I'm talking about, right? So the usual development loop is modify the source code, then recompile, and then test the changes, right? So here, uh, we're going to have a great time, honestly. So that means we will have to keep that in mind, that we don't really have a super short development loop, unless we figure out how to compile things on the operating system. But as far as I know, it's not, it's not really supported yet, right? So it is not. Here is hello. That's not bad. Look at that. That is easier than I expected. Like, what the fuck? So yeah, hello world. Okay, so <laughs> this is cool. That is fucking cool. Uh, all right. So I think like you guys know what we need to do. You guys know what we need to do, right? We must create game of life on this thing to assert our dominance. That's how I assert the dominance in the project. I come in and implement the game of life. <laughs> uh, that's what we need to do. We need to implement the game of life. But I'm already saying for almost one hour, right? And I ran out of tea. So I think the time has come to make a small break and make a cup of tea. And after I have a cup of tea, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll and implement the game of life. Right, let's make a break. Um, all right. So let's create game of life application. Uh, so let's go into apps and I wonder if there is already maybe game of life. I didn't think so. Uh, so if we take a look at the samples, there's a game loop. I mean, it's, it's, this is something that we're interested in rather than hello world, honestly. Uh, right, so there's a game loop. 
and if we take a look inside of the game loop, uh, so this is the thing uh, we are creating the instance, right? We're just creating the instance, and what else do we do in here? Ooh, this one is interesting. We create a canvas first of all. Okay, so I, I think I did actually a very good thing that they decided to check this specific example. Uh, you custom create element windows, uh, fill, you fill the whole thing, it's focusable, panel, and so on and so forth. So you created some sort of a canvas. And um, if you take a look at the, what is the can? Yeah, okay, so it's a canvas is just an ES element. All right. Um, so ES, I suppose, stands for ECMAScript. <laughs> uh, so we have a message user and canvas mess canvas message okay so you can actually assign uh callbacks to different messages that uh this element receives okay that's very interesting so you can send messages to specific elements and you can actually receive them through callbacks um all right so you can have some other stuff in here all right that's very cool then you start animating all right, so send animation mes messages to the canvas. Uh -huh, start animating. Uh, focus the canvas to receive the keyboard messages. Uh -huh. That is very interesting. And then you... Uh -huh. So you actually do this thing once. Because I suppose you do that when you receive the in instance create message and you receive it once at the beginning of the application. So I assume, because it makes sense. So afterwards, I, I suppose... You just keep looping and receiving messages and you don't really handle them, right? So th that's basically how it works. That's basically how it works. That's actually kind of cool. Okay. Um, so, and within the canvas message, within the canvas message, if we receive message paint, uh, you get the boundaries of your entire thing and you render the game within that thing. So, and... <laughs> Yes, paint. Uh, oh my god! And I and, and I swear to God, I think I saw a similar API idea in Serenity OS as well. So yeah, in Qt there is a. It tries to mimic the, this classical UI libraries, right? So it's actually quite common paradigm in this retain UI things. Uh, it is actually a very common paradigm. So, okay, so there is a painter and you can draw blocks, uh, then you draw rectangle and stuff like that. Okay, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so then you receive an animate. Uh, keep sending animation messages. Uh, oh, okay. So you also have to say that the animation is not complete, so it keeps receiving messages. This is some sort of like a inner knowledge that you have to have about this animation system but okay so i think we'll we'll gain that knowledge over time so we'll update the game using the time delta provided uh and then we repaint the whole thing this is like a very old school style ui programming like a very old school style not really all i mean uh whatever i'm doing people would say that it's probably old school but it's kind of like a uh, renaissance right it's more of a like a renaissance programming so before that we were doing that and before that we were doing whatever i do today right uh so something like that something like that it's sort of an alternative way i would say it's it's a it's a gui programming from zero for, from 2000s and 2010s let's put it this way or maybe a little bit from 90s right a little bit from 90s it's it's the gui programming for that era roughly um yeah and okay so this is basically the game loop within the game loop you have different things in here you're drawing blocks and stuff like that and looks cool looks gucci looks at tamaguchi it would be kind of cool to actually find the definitions for all of these functions somewhere just to have a list of them right because that's how i like to learn about apis uh right so let's actually go ahead and do that so i want to go and just grip uh, for this entire stuff, right? So where, I suppose this is a structure. So let's actually just go ahead and assume that uh, there is a structure like that, like ES element pane. And I wonder where it's going to be. So it would be maybe better to exclude certain folders, right? So there is a problem with grep. Maybe I can use just a rib grep. I don't remember. Uh, do I have a rib grep or G? I didn't even have a rib grep. Uh, all right, so rib grep. Maybe I can install that. 
I hope I don't have to install it from Cargo, because Cargo usually builds things from scratch. Okay, so there is a rip grab in here, so let me actually quickly do that. And then quickly. My mouse keeps dying at a very inconvenient moments. And only when I'm streaming, by the way. When I'm not streaming, my mouse does not die. So something with streaming. I, th I think it's hackers that are trying to hack my stream. Um, <clears throat> so, yesu, yesu, yesu. Okay, so I have a rib grab. So I should be able to maybe do some stuff like, like this RG. Uh, and it should... No, nah, I didn't find it. So that means it's probably defined slightly differently. It's probably defined like this. Okay. So is it not... It's... Oh, it's a function. I, why did I think it's a structure? I'm, I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, let me see. I want to find maybe ESPainter. That's what I, what, that's what I want to find. I think ESPainter is a little bit more interesting. So it's going to be RG. And I'm going to find it as a struct. I wonder if it... Okay, it is in fact defined like that. Is, does it... Or like... Uh, a rib grab has a mode where it prints name and then the lines so my emacs can actually parse the shit <laughs> because it's not convenient this is one of the reasons why i usually don't use rib grab because it uses this awful format that is not parsable by default um so minus n i suppose let me find minus n what does it do um yeah where is the minus n okay so line show line numbers okay so let's do it let's do it like that and G freaking jibated <clears throat> okay sorry why why am i listening to like it's it's almost like i never fucking learn anything it's it's insane how i never learn anything uh so is there something like posix um mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay f fuck that whatever so let's actually go to maybe util so there is a design uh, designer 2 and it's uh, 47 so and this is us paint uh, right so the U us <laughs> us paint uh, like honestly like i would just use a rib grab more if it was just printing in a normal format like at the usual format it's just like a, i don't know skill issue i suppose um all right all right all right, all right. so that's cool i like how everything is so readable i really like that and it's also pretty straightforward. Even though this is a C++, by the way. Chat, chat. This is C++. And it's a, like a C-style C++, actually. So they don't even use methods. Right, it's just structure. Um, I don't like that. Real C++ is impossible. Yeah, it is possible, apparently. <gasps> They're using Luigi! Oh my god! They even... This is the same GUI library that they use in a GF, uh, you know, the, the debugger, uh, GF2. It's the same GUI library. It looks different, but because it maybe has a different look and feel, but the, the core is the same, actually. Uh, right, the core is the same. That's actually super cool. Um, anyways, so game loop. Uh, game loop. Let's go ahead. So you know what? I want to get rid of that hello thingy. Uh, let me quickly do that. Uh huh. So, all right. Now let's go into here and let's create a goal. A goal. <clears throat> Excuse me. A goal. Mm. Uh, it's a convey game of life. Convey is game of life. So, what do we put in the um, in the ini? Right. So we're gonna have samples game loop ini. So we have to put general uh, name is gonna be game of life game of life and to build this entire thing we have to do apps uh, apps 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 uh, goal <laughs> sorry uh, all right that's cool so we've got that uh what's funny is that goal cpp what if we just create an empty thing right so we have an empty thing like how is it going to react to just an empty build if i try to do it like that that's a very interesting question, chat. <clears throat> Cheers. Um, it actually has a port of GF. Uh, you mean for, for the essence? I didn't really read the chat, so I'm sorry. Um, 
so let's do a compilation. Well, we have to imagine that we're programming in in the very old times, like for the mainframes and stuff like that. In the time, at the times of punch cards and mainframes, you're supposed to write your application on a piece of paper. You have to hand it to a special person who would create punch cards or punch tapes for you and then load it into the mainframe, uh, do the batch processing, do the computation and return you back a compilation error. <laughs> So we have to sort of role play like that. Like imagine we are programmers at that time, uh, right? So, and every time you have a long compilation cycle, think about it like, oh, I'm just like a, you know, old fashioned programmer for a mainframe, right? Uh, so yes, yes, old programmers, guys, C is, blo it is bloated. Yes, it is bloated. You have to program in the Fortran for IBM mainframe. Mm -mm. Seven hours past, you have a typo. Exactly. Imagine the begging session at that time. There were no debugging session, actually. <laughs> right. So you get back a compilation error or result, and you have to analyze whatever the fuck you wrote on that piece of paper. And as far as you know, the, the, the program you would write like with handwriting. So if the person who is typing, like creating punch cards for you, misinterprets some characters, uh, so you screwed right so maybe your program is correct actually but the person uh that was typing the punch card fucked up and like you don't know whether it's you fucked up or the person who was actually typing this thing fucked up like nobody fucking knows uh and the question is like do we have we have a game of life can i run it uh apparently i can't it actually crashed right so there is game of life it compiled successfully that's what's funny it compiled successfully and it just crashed and this is an empty file by the way it is absolutely empty file it doesn't contain anything it didn't fail compilation so it created an executable that executable doesn't work interesting interesting so that's for sure so that's totally fine let's do the shutdown uh all righty so i wonder if there's a way to just compile only the application like is there any way to do that so maybe i can take a look at the help so you can do find the search the project oh that's very interesting so yes paint um unrecognized command find oh okay it has a built-in grep. The build system of Essence OS has a built-in grep, guys. Um, so just for your information, you can use no heading with rib grep to do the stuff you want. That's a very long flag. Is there a shorter version, honestly? Like, I don't really like it. Okay, so we have build the application in ports. Uh -huh. So can I do help build? Mm -hmm. I want to build only applications. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Create a live USB and C or CD-ROM. This is actually super cool. Mm -hmm. So apparently, like, I don't really see a way to just, like, build the apps. Um, what if I say build goal and recognize command? Okay, so there's literally no way to do that. You literally have to rebuild everything, apparently. You literally have to rebuild everything. Okay. Uh, so, as far as I know, uh, right, so we can take a look at the samples, game or game loop and stuff like that. So the void star, right? So this is a void star. This is one of the things we have to do. And we have to initialize all of the constructors and stuff like that. So while true, we are receiving a message, ES message, message eh what the fuck is going on emacs yes message receive yes message receive so and all of that is not going to be uh, um you know available unless we include the essence right so that's where it's all coming from the first thing you have to do on receiving the this thing on receiving the message you have to create you must you obligated create obligated to create an instance right so that's what we're doing in here. We're creating an instance. And what's interesting is that they making the instance like a global thing, right? So yeah, I suppose 
even though it's a global variable, it's still a local variable within your application, right? So globalness of a variable is kind of relative. It's global for your code, but it's not visible outside of your application. Is it really global if it's not visible outside of your application? I don't fucking think so. File is more global than your globalist of the variables. Think about that. Think about that. Database is the most global of the variables in your application because it's visible uh, in other applications. Like think about your pure functional programming language that making requests to Postgres database. How the fuck is it pure functional programming if it's mutating this huge ass variable called PostgreSQL? That is what I call the definition of hypocrisy. Like using Haskell and then storing all your state in PostgreSQL is the most hypocrite thing you can ever do in your entire life. I'm fucking telling you, mate. Fucking telling you. It's, it's just a monad. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can circumvent the hypocrisy through a monad. But anyway, I see you through. I know the truth. I programmed in Haskell. I know how it works. You won't trick me, okay? You won't trick me with your fancy monads. Anyways. <laughs> Um, let's continue. So the, uh, we created an instance. Uh, it's called Game Loop, but let's actually do Game uh, of Life, right? So this is a game of life. Uh, and do we need to handle anything? Let's actually let's actually leave it as it is. Let's actually leave it as it is and see how it's going to perform. I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, right. So just create an instance and just continue pulling the messages. That's it. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and just uh, build. Uh, so we have to do K. Oh, it's already open? Wait, wait a freaking second. What the fuck is going on, chat? Why did it start so fucking quickly? What the hell is... What the fuck is going on? I didn't expect that. Even my mouse has died. It's so It was so unexpected. Okay, so game of life. And okay, so that works, right? That created a window, uh, right, which is completely black. So there's nothing um, running there. Wait, installing without... Was it already running or something? That's, that's kind of bizarre, anyway. So uh, maybe it does have some sort of an incremental building, right? If I try to do that... Okay, so it actually compiles faster. I suppose... Okay, I was thinking that maybe it doesn't have an incremental build and it always rebuilds everything, but apparently it's not true. So, okay, so that, that's actually super cool. I really like that. So that means we can iterate a little bit faster, which is important, I think, which is important for, for the game development, essentially. Uh, all right, so let's go into the game loop. And the first thing we have to do, uh, we have to essentially create a canvas, right? So we have a canvas, uh, so here it is. I'm gonna put this element in here. Uh, right and yes a create element uh, custom create element so I probably can do some stuff like this can I find this thing uh, that's actually super cool I want to find the definition so it's in a GUI CPP right so it's a desktop GUI CPP uh, line 3604 this is how you create a custom element Right, you supply the parent, right, so the parent, the flags, and the ES style ID. So that's how it works. So you allocate some stuff on the heap and stuff like that, you initialize, and then you just return, okay? So that's pretty cool. So th this is the desktop layer of the operating system. This is just a desktop layer, okay. So let's go ahead and create the canvas. Uh, so we're gonna be using uh, ES cell fill, so it will fill the entire cell, then it's focusable, and style panel window divider, whatever the fuck it is. Okay, so that's fine. And we're just basically saving that uh, in here. So another thing we have to do, we have to supply the user message, right? So this is the user message. Uh, and we need to start the animation. So send animation messages to the canvas and uh, focus. The entire canvas so this is what we want to do in here uh it's kind of interesting that you do it once right so 
What if it end focuses? Oh, okay. So, so you start in it and you're making sure that it brings itself to the front. That's probably what it means. Um, I think that's what it means. Right? That's why you focus one. You create a window. It might be created somewhere behind, but you want it sort of like a focus right in your face. It may get unfocused, but that's the decision of the user, right? So we're trying to be annoying like that. Okay, makes sense. Um, so, and if I try to compile that, it should not compile, by the way, right? Because the uh, the function is not like a canva canvas message is not available. All right. So th this build system is, is actually kind of cool, right? So it has its own prompt, right? So you, you modify some things and you rebuild it. Sometimes you want to find something, right? So you want to find ES Painter. Uh, you can find it in here so you can grab it. It's kind of an interesting idea, actually, like build system as a sort of like a shell, as sort of a prompt. Uh, I've never seen seen that before. Maybe it is a thing in some projects, but this is I think that this is the first time I see something like that. Um, right. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, I really like things that are kind of unusual, or trying new different things. Um, so what was the what was the canvas message? Okay, canvas message. Mm -mm. So this is a canvas message. It returns an integer, interestingly, and in which case it returns an integer? I suppose maybe at the end it always returns zero, as you can see in here, right? So it returns zero, um, which is understandable. <clears throat> so bound yes bounds in set. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So here we're supposed to draw the state of our game. In here we're supposed to update the state of our game. And in here we're supposed to handle the input from the user which also updates the state of the game. Makes a lot of sense, actually. Makes a lot of sense. And what's funny is that it doesn't use switch cases. Mm, it doesn't really use switch cases. And the reason why it doesn't use switch cases is probably because there's too many messages, right? And switch cases usually, like, it's usually better to use them when you handle all the cases. And in the case of the messages, you obviously don't handle all of them, uh, all of the cases. So that's probably why they just use if else to maybe um, do not trigger the warning about not handling all of the messages, or maybe to explicitly say that we're not handling all of the messages. I don't freaking know. So Vera Stanchev, thank you so much for tier two subscription. Again, absolutely not necessary, but I really appreciate the gesture with the message hype, hype indeed. It's actually a pretty interesting project in here. Okay, so the first thing we do, we take the bounds of the painter, right? So, and this is a, just a rectangle. This is just a rectangle. And I wonder if we can try to find that specific rectangle. Uh, okay, so it's a, it's in OS header. Um, it's in OS header. So it's not even C code, right? So I suppose it's something like basically generated or something like that. Yeah, it's prob it probably is generated. Uh, so let's actually find desktop OS header. This file is a part of Essence written by Next. It's something generated, I swear. Yeah, it's not even prefixed with dashes or anything like that. It could be... Oh, it's even... <laughs> Damn, there's so much like a code generation in here. It's in, it's interesting, honestly. It is interesting. Okay, so some of the definition for the structures are basically defined in some other places. So um, let's actually go to the desktop OS header and let's find the struct ES Painter, right? So and it's um actually ES rectangle. That's what I want to find. Yeah. So okay, uh, it's actually. It's not defined at the left top point and the size. It's defined as the left, right, top, and bottom. Right. Okay. So, and, okay, this one is inclusive, but this one is exclusive. Do you guys know why? So, basically, exclusive means that it doesn't include, uh, like, the last thing. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't include the pixel that it's on essentially yeah yeah exactly chat exactly so you can do things like r minus l and get the actual width uh right so that's why you can do that so it actually makes sense it's, it's actually convenient uh, to, to keep rectangles like that um it's actually super convenient <clears throat> anyways um so let's go to the game loop and then here we do the game rendering so do we do anything special no we, we actually don't so we can 
maybe do es draw rectangle we supply the painter in here we supply the painter we're translating some rectangles and stuff like that um but i'm not sure if i if i care so sprite bounce or some other bounce i want to comment this thing out and i want to just render whatever rectangle right so can i do es rectangle uh, and supply left right and top and bottom in there um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. es rectangle so yeah left right top and bottom so left is going to be zero right is going to be 100 uh top is going to be zero uh bottom is going to be 100 something like this can i do something like that that will be kind of interesting uh might as well just do something like es rect angle rect uh maybe even something like that yeah so we provide the rectangle so now we have to provide the color i'm not sure if you can see that you can, can't probably see that here so we provide the uh two colors i don't really know why we provide two colors and then we provide something es rect one i want to find the uh definition of this thing super quick so where is it defined um it is defined again in os header surprisingly okay so os header yes mm. oh it's I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing com completely so i copy pasted completely wrong thing draw rectangle i want to find it yeah oh, it's it's a draw rectangle i'm an idiot um okay so that means it is here draw rectangle so okay that makes sense so the first color is main color and the second one is a border color and then you have a border size all right so i suppose i don't really care about the second color here i don't think i care about it and they actually provide the size via the es rect one which is rather an interesting macro so what does this macro do uh so let's actually find this entire thing so oh the the macro just okay this is very interesting so you have a special macro where you provide a one number and it just construct a rectangle out of like this thing it just repeats that value for each individual component of the rectangle for left right top and bottom right so which is convenient i suppose right so you just basically say that it's going to be rectangle two 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 uh right two 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 okay so that that makes sense i suppose that makes sense so and in here that means i want to have a red rectangle i don't really care about the color of the border and in fact i don't really care about the border whatsoever so that means i'm going to do something like this so i fully understand how this function works hopefully right so this is just the pain we don't we're not going to really handle anything else yet right so we're only going to handle uh, us M, uh, msg paint and stuff like that all right so let's actually try to build and run this thing and see how it's going to perform and now it's taking some time because i did i update os header or something I, okay it's kind of difficult to know when it decides to rebuild everything and when it doesn't decide to rebuild everything so yeah it's kind of bizarre so how's it going everyone how are you guys doing um yeah i wish i just had a little bit better laptop maybe on a better modern laptop i wouldn't have to wait as much but i mean it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't honestly like recently i saw john blow complain on twitter that like whatever laptop he buys this day it doesn't survive after a couple of years or something they, they basically all die so they are they're all basically like a trash is it even possible to buy a decent laptop in 2024 maybe i should not even bother maybe i should not even bother how did you find this oss uh i have a my secret supplier of oss mm -mm. Mm, maybe external gpu is better for cooling uh maybe the framework laptop seems cool i'm not sure if they sell it in russia uh, so probably not uh, maybe you can buy it through some suppliers but whatever um they're hell expensive but to be honest the new macbook has lasted me a while okay i just use desktop uh, i want something like more mobile honestly than a desktop desktop is just too huge things bad yeah think pads sounds great actually maybe i should stick with think pads but the very modern ThinkPads are also kind of a kind of a. Eh. 
<clears throat> okay, so we're done. Get ready, Chad. Oh, fuck. All right. I waited two minutes just to get... Okay. All right. All right. All right. So it's actually... Uh, all right. So that's that's much better. Um, mm, at least it doesn't rebuild everything. Uh, so let me see. Canvas message. Aha. Uh -huh. No, no, canvas message. Ooh, this one is weird. Like, originally this thing accepts element. Am I... Yeah, I'm being... I'm being an idiot, I think. I think I'm being an idiot. Like, where do you even get the paint? You get the paint from a mess. Oh my god. So it's inside of the message. And you don't even use the element in here. I thought you accept an element like... as. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Fuck me, mate! Compile game of life. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Booting operating system, blet. Suka. Поехали. Okay. Game of life. Oh, holy fucking shit! Prof, 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 prof. What the fuck? You can you can develop software for the separating system. It's that easy. I didn't even use any documentation, by the way. Like I'm just looking around the source code and I'm just copy pasting stuff from different parts. And I, I can like make a simple application that does things, right? Um so yeah, you don't even need any documentation. So that's that's super cool. This is actually super 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 cool. Okay, so I can put some stuff on the screen. So that means I can already make a game out of that shit. So let's actually see how you can um, handle controls and stuff, right? So if I take a look at the game loop, uh, right? So one of the things we have is message type. So the messages that we really care about are message key down or message key up, All right? So I think I want to take a look at yes, message key down right so this is going to be the first thing that i'm handling and the second thing i'm handling is going to be a key, a key up um right and to be fair i want to have a some sort of a vector do you have uh some sort of a vector in here so there's a vector file um might as well might as well just have something like float x um maybe even dx no, we, we just need X, which is going to be the position of this entire thing, right? So this is going to be the position. Maybe it's called VEC, uh, right? So is it called VEC? Yeah, mm -hmm. VEC. No, not really. So there's no like math vectors and stuff like that. That's kind of a shame. That's kind of a shame. We can always create maybe our own thing, like a vector 2, uh, right? So it's going to be float X and Y. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have position. Right, position is, um, we can initialize all of that stuff maybe down below, right? Maybe down below we can initialize all of that stuff when we receive uh, instance create. But not necessarily, we can actually initialize all of this stuff somewhere here. So position uh, is going to be 0, 0, and the velocity is going to be also 0, 0, right? So this is where we initialize all of this thing. And when we are rendering all of that stuff, right, so X is this one. So that means this is position X uh, and this is position X plus 100. So we can actually maybe factor out, since this is C++, for compile time constants, we don't have to use preprocessor. We can just say uh, something like a rect, uh, rect size, right, and it's going to be 100, right, so this is going to be just 100. And here we can just do rect size, uh, rectum size. Ah ha ha, funny joke, ho 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 ho. Uh, all right, so then we have this kind of thing. So this is going to be position y, and this is going to be position y plus rect size. Ah, ha ha. Uh, so I know that all of that is floats, right? But I'm using floats for computations, so we don't lose any of the computations. Um, okay, 
so but maybe i can just can i initialize all that stuff right so they say that they run all of the destructors in this init thingy right so that means maybe we don't have to do it uh, like that right so all of the initialization probably gonna happen in the init i hope so um okay so we're just rendering this entire stuff and um so we're gonna be probably doing updates right so we're gonna be updating the position on the update message of some sort an update message is actually message animate uh right so it's somewhere here and message animate um right we have to say that it's not complete so it never finishes the animation this is a little bit a little bit of a bizarre thing but it's fine it's actually kind of fine so and then we ask the the entire thing to repaint itself please go repaint itself we're using like literally using c plus plus we're using no ptr and stuff like that damn i like i like using c plus plus and programming in c style i fucking love it because you get stronger typing right you get stronger typing you get to use this new ptr and stuff like that. it's just so fucking cool too bad like there's some C++ fans that start shoving all of the crazy C++ features everywhere. And it's just like, I don't know. <sighs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, so what do we have in here? So we're going to be doing update. And I wonder if I can just do something like... Uh, so Delta MS, right? I can probably do the following thing. I can take Delta MS. I can multiply it by velocity. And then add the position like that. And since this is C++, I can overload the mother flipping operators. Can your C do that? Can your sloppy C do that? I don't fucking think so. It doesn't have shit. I can overload the operators. Fuck you. Fuck you. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, let's actually overload some operators. Uh, so, I'm going to be operator, multiplication, and we're going to accept the vector. And uh, so, here we, we're doing the scaling, right? So, uh, I take the velocity and where do I put, yeah, I, I put it on the right. So that means I want to actually do vector to, um, it's called V and this one is a scalar, right? So that's what we're doing here. And uh, so we just return uh, VX multiplied by S, VY multiplied by S. And I suppose the other thing we have to do, we have to do operator, operator plus equals. So here we accept uh, that's kind of actually kind of funny. So I don't remember. I think plus x is supposed to return the reference. So here we accept the reference, and then we accept the other thing. So let's call it d, right? So and then here we're just gonna do v x plus x d x, and like this. And then we have to return d. I think this is how you implement plus equals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right in C plus plus. So you accept the reference, and this entire expression must also return a reference, usually, traditionally, right? Traditionally, that's how it works. Um, okay, so, and that's about it. So when you like, do key down, when you do key down, we need to check what kind of key you pressed, actually. What kind of key you pressed. Uh, we do scan code. Aha. Uh -huh. That's very interesting. So keyboard, scan code, left arrow. Scan code, left arrow. All right. Um, and also, aha. So one of the things we can do in here is maybe a kind of a similar thing. So there is a Boolean, is left held. Uh, we can also do something like that, is left held, which is gonna be true. Right, so this is going to be true. Uh, otherwise, if we encounter sort of like a right, right, we do is right held. And we can kind of copy paste these things in here uh, and just replace them with falses. Something like that. And because of that, actually, we probably don't even need the velocity because we can construct velocity uh, on each frame. Uh, so here we have false and this one is basically right. Uh -huh. So essentially uh, we create vector to velocity, right? So this is going to be velocity, which is zero, zero or whatnot. 
and then if is left held right we do velocity plus um you know vector and we have to go to the left so minus 100 zero right and then if is right held uh, we do this thing um plus just a regular thing so that's how we're going to be doing that and then we multiply it by the ms and so on and so forth and then we um yeah so then we just like do the rest of the stuff that's basically it i think i think that's basically it we, we could actually simplify this entire thing I, I like to introduce the notion of a, the enumeration for a direction then i have array that maps the direction to maybe scan code on maybe to the element of the boolean array that answers whether it's held or not so it's a little bit easier to work with and stuff like that um right but let's actually see if this entire thing compiles because i'm pretty sure it doesn't compile so i want to go through all the compilation errors right so let's actually go through all the compilation errors and see uh okay so there's a bunch of okay so there, there were a bunch of warnings but apart from that it just compiled apart from that it just compiled okay so uh that's pretty cool just a second i need to refresh my my mouse because it died again so game of life uh all right so i press oh it disappeared but it disappeared when i pressed left and right so which is kind of a good indicator that we're doing something correctly in here uh right so i wonder what so it's a millis delta milliseconds okay let me actually find this goddamn delta milliseconds what's the diff it's a fuck okay oh, no. well i mean i kind of understand why right so because it's a low level it's on the level of like integers and stuff like that we need to convert it to float so essentially if it's a milliseconds um mm -mm. so we have to take this entire thing uh, and uh, multiply it by by this right so that's what we have to do mm that may work so there's a little bit of a warning about like narrowing when we're doing this kind of thing so maybe we could explicitly in c++ you're supposed to statically cast things right so static cast and it's going to be like an integer or something like that uh right so that's how okay <laughs> was not particularly convenient <laughs> all right uh okay so let's try to run it one more time Mm -mm -mm. Okay, good. I'm holding left. I'm holding right. It's lagging a little bit, surprisingly, but it's working. And I wonder why is it lagging? Maybe because I'm streaming maybe because i'm streaming but that's fine so we can handle things already so that's kind of cool that's actually kind of cool we're trying to make a game of life maybe uh so uh let's go ahead and you know do the grid i suppose let's go ahead and do the grid mm -mm. Does 2048 lags? That's a good question, actually. But I mean, I'm not really doing anything that the example doesn't do, uh, right? I don't really expect it to lag that much. I don't really expect it to lag that much. Uh, to be fair, like we're already streaming for two hours. I'm not sure if I'll have time to do Game of Life because it's it's a little bit involved, uh, right? So maybe I'm not going to do that. It is lagging, actually. Right, because again, it's, it's kind of like my, my laptop is, is really weak. I'm pretty sure on your computer it's going to be way better. Uh, right, so I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't think the operating system is that laggish. Right. Uh, it's, it's in emulator while I'm also streaming. So, you know, it's understandable kind of. It's kind of understandable. <clears throat> so, yes, yes, yes. Alrighty. Okay. Mm, so what we're gonna have in here? I uh, probably want to introduce. 
the amount of rows and columns right so how many rows and columns we're going to have all right so let's say it's going to be board rows and 10 and then the columns something like that so and all of that is going to be obviously an integer so and i want to have the square cells build board she described of uh, board um, so I want to have a square cells, right? So maybe because of that, I'm going to have a cell um, cell size, right? And it's going to be fixed size, some, something like 20, right? Something like 20. Um, when we are rendering the whole thing, when we are rendering the whole thing, we probably want to actually center center the entire stuff, right? So we need to come up with the position for the whole thing. So to know the positions, we need to know the boundaries, right? We need to know the boundaries. Uh, the position is going to start, uh, I suppose in C++ you can't have designated initializers, like maybe we use a version where it is possible, uh, right? So, so it's gonna be bounce uh, right minus uh, minus left so this is basically the half right so this is basically the half and we have to subtract subtract the half of the width of the whole board the width of the board is actually board calls multiplied by cell size uh, cell size also divided by two to be fair i would like to maybe multiply it by half right because these thing two things are integers so you're going to end up with the integers so and for the symmetry we can do something like this uh right so this is how we center it horizontally now we have to do vertically um, so it actually has to be bottom top and this is rows there we go so this is the position from which we have to start rendering all of these things and it's already centered uh, you know accordingly hopefully okay so we can start iterating all of those things we're gonna start with y I want to iterate a row wise right so y less than board rows plus plus y Mm, okay, ah, semicolon I set. So this one is going to be x, x, calls, x, uh, right. Mm -mm. And so the this is the position of the board. So maybe I'm going to call it the board position. Uh, and here we're going to have another thing which is called cell position. Uh, cell position. It's a vector 2. And it's more like, can I say it's a x, y, but x multiplied by cell size, and this one is multiplied by cell size. And I wonder I can actually, if I actually can do something like multiply by cell size, and then add the board position. I wonder if I can do something like that. Uh, I want to even put it like first here. Uh, look at that. So that's basically the cell position, and this is where you want to draw the rectangle. Uh, so might as well just put this stuff in here. So the cell, this is the cell position, uh, cell position, cell size. Um, this is another cell position, uh, cell position, cell size. And then we just render this entire thing. So I want to call this cell rect, cell rect interestingly so if we just render it like that we won't be able to see individual cells so let's actually do checker pattern right so it's super easy you sum up x and y and just depending on whether it's odd or even you just render with a different color so that's the easiest thing to to do that uh right so we just want to see the the actual grid whether it works or not so animation in terms of animation i don't think we're going to have animations right now though um i might as well Mm, yeah, let's actually get rid of that. Uh, keys are not really that important. Uh, right, so what else do we have in here? I think that's about it. Right, I think that's about it. Okay, so now if I try to rebuild the entire thing, let's see if it's going to work. Uh, so there are some problems in here. Uh, 37, what is it talking about? 37 problem. So it doesn't like primary expression before. Okay, so you can't really do that, but I wonder if I can do something like that. So will you be okay with me doing it like that? Almost, actually. Um, so vector two, 
Oh no, oh, it works, but we don't have a operator plus between two vectors. Okay, so we have a plus equals, but we don't have a uh, just plus. So let's actually do operator plus, uh, right? So it's going to be vector two A, vector two B. And let's just sum those mother flippers up. Uh, AX plus BX, AY plus BY. There we go. So, uh, yeah. And by the way, I wonder if because of that I now can do this kind of thing. Will it infer the type? Nah, it didn't infer the type, unfortunately. Uh, all right. It worked. Okay. So there's a couple of warnings, but it's fine. It's totally fine. Don't even worry about that chat. Don't even worry about that chat. Chat, chat, don't even worry. First try, mother flipper, first try. First try, mother flipper, first try. First try, first try. First try, mother flipper, first try. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, what we want to do, we want to have an actual board. We want to have an actual board with, where we can render shit. A game of chess, exactly. So let's actually go ahead and maybe define, um, you know, boolean uh, board, and you're gonna have like a board rows and board columns. And I wonder if we can just use size t instead of integers in here because that's what you're usually using here. Um, okay, so and. How are we going to be initializing all of that stuff? Can I just like do something like this? Let, let me see. So can I just build it? Compiling. Is it going to compile? Oh, it's probably going to compile everything. Fuck. Fuck me. All right. So while it's doing that, well, we can try to do the, the other things without actually saving the source code. <laughs> right. So we're trying to save a little bit of a time. Um, so in essentially here, instead of doing this kind of stuff, right, so we can do uh board y x right so and that's how we're going to be checking all this thing um right. uh, i didn't know you could create a new operator this is c plus plus this is c plus plus this is not c some stinky c old ass language this is a modern c plus plus um okay so that, that worked so that compiled there's a couple of warnings in here so um, oh yeah, so since we're using size t now, it is complaining that we're not using these kind of things anymore. Uh, maybe because of that, yeah. Is it gonna build it a little bit faster, hopefully? Or is it gonna be also 30 seconds? Probably also 30 seconds. Anyways, uh, so we have a board and uh, um, usually what I like to do, right, so is to calculate this kind of stuff into second secondary board and then to the primary board and so on and so forth right so this is the board and this one is going to be backboard uh right so the board rows uh board columns and all of that is initially false uh right and um so when are we going to be computing the next thing so since we do the animation we actually wait a little bit so there should be some sort of a cooldown after which we're computing the next step so there should be some sort of a cooldown so let's figure it out i suppose uh let's figure that out uh so is it still building okay so everything seems to be fine uh all right compiled usb something yeah it, it's literally rebuilding everything so <laughs> um okay maybe we can for, for the time being, actually, what we can do, we can do the computation of the next state on a key press, some sort of a key press. I think it's going to be easier, honestly. I think it's going to be easier. Um, all right, so we do the animate. We're not going to do any animation or anything like that. So we're going to do key down, act on press, not act on release. So let's actually go to the game, uh, game loop. Uh, and what do we do in here? So we have a scan code. Uh, when I do this kind of thing, so scan code um, space, can I do something like that? So if I do key down space, I can try to compute the next thing. So how are we going to be computing the next thing? So we're going to be iterating through the board. Uh, right, so we're iterating through the board. And then we're kind of looking at the board, right? So we have two situations. Either the current thing is alive 
or is it dead? All right, so it's alive or dead. Another thing is that we need to count the neighbors, right? So I, I can probably do something like uh, neighbors count. Um, let's actually follow the uh, the style neighbors. Uh, I'm going to provide x and y, um, right? And it will give me the amount of neighbors. So if you encounter, um, if you are in a life, I, I don't remember the game of life rules. <laughs> Uh, Conway's uh, Game of Life Wikipedia. Uh, thank you so much, In Luis, uh, for subscription with the message. Hey, hey, sorry for being late. It's fine. I forgive you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the subscription. Um, any life self with fewer than two neighbors dies. Okay, so if it has two or three, it stays alive, right? So if neighbors equal to or equal three it stays alive so we have back a uh, board uh, y x equal true otherwise it basically dies and we can simplify the whole thing like so right. something like this uh, and if the cell is dead exactly three makes it alive right so I think that's how we can do it. <clears throat> so if it's alive, it stays alive if it's two, three, but dies if something else. If it's dead, it becomes alive only when it's three. Right, so it makes a lot of sense, honestly. So the only thing we need to implement is account neighbors. And also flip the board, right? So that, that's the two operation, flip board. And flipping board is just copying the back board into the front board. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and implement this. Mm -hmm. Count neighbors, x and y. So this one I'm going to call cx and cy because they're sort of like centers. And what we're going to be iterating, we're going to be actually iterating the dx from minus 1, dx less or equal to 1, uh, plus plus dx. Um, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right, so in an actual x that we have in here is uh, cx plus dx and cy plus dy and we kind of want to ignore the situation when dx are uh, equal to zero and dy equal to zero so when it's not that and we can maybe apply a de morgan law by doing something like not equals or this thing not equals but it's actually made it less readable in my opinion so i think i'm gonna not apply the de morgan law Sometimes I think like applying the Morgan law makes conditions less readable, even though it makes you look smart. Look how smart I know the Morgan law and how. But if you actually look at it, it's kind of less readable. Honestly, you have to put more mental effort into sort of parse that. So yeah, like I'm recently kind of stopped like applying the Morgan law. Uh, anyway, so we have x and y. But here is the thing, is that. Um, you can overflow you need you actually need to wrap around these kind of things so maybe i'm gonna just actually do mod uh we can do something like mod board columns uh right and mod board rows right and i'm using mode because the actual usual mode doesn't work with negative numbers people who watch me quite often know what i'm about to do right so there is a very convenient sort of like a property of a mod operator i don't even have a node where is the fucking node do i have lua okay so does lua have this uh, lua even uh freaking is there any scripting language that maybe i can find user local bin maybe there's some sort of a node in here yeah for some reason node is not in my path but i do have it in here yeah, I do have it in here and one of the, yeah, so that's fine. Okay, so one of the cool properties of mod is that if you overflow this entire thing, it wraps around, right? It basically wraps around. So if you if you are bigger than 100, right, it wraps around, starts from the beginning. It works for the positive numbers, but it doesn't work for the negative numbers, right? It works for the negative numbers in all of these languages like Python, right? So where you do something like this, it will give you 99 and also apparently to Lua. I just discovered Lua can also do this kind of shit, right? But Node.js, C, C++, uh, they, they can't really do that. 
So um, the way you kind of do that, you do a little bit of a trick, right? Imagine you have A minus 1, B, uh, right, 100. And so essentially, you try to do something like this, right? You try to do something like this. To fix that, you can always add B and get 99. But because of that, uh, this kind of trick, this kind of trick doesn't really work for positive numbers anymore, right? So if you apply this for positive numbers, they are broken. So what you have to do now is to try to mod it again, and you get a thing that works for, um, you know, positive numbers and for negative numbers as well, right? So this is kind of like a special mod for these languages where minus one mod 100 is actually equal to minus one, but this is not what you want. Um, right, so in here we can create a mod uh, where we have A, B, and we can just do a mod b plus b and then uh, mod b there we go so that's what i want to do in here and it will properly wrap around because of that since i'm using instant everywhere so i don't know i don't really know why i decided to use size t probably because i'm using those things as sizes of the arrays and that's what size t is created for it's a type for sizes for the arrays and i decided to do it like that but i don't know i don't know like i'm a little bit indecisive on this kind of stuff no, none of that actually matters all of that is just a minor and important things. So anyway, so we have here, uh, you know, the neighbors, uh, right? And neighbors zero. Mm -mm. And uh... okay, I let's let's make a deal. I'm gonna pretend that I never read that message. Okay. And we're going to continue working as usual. I can literally just explain it, what, what I was doing two minutes ago. <clears throat> Anyways, so, uh, right, so we have this kind of thing. So if board yx, um, a plus b is enough. Ah, that's what you mean. Okay, I see, I see. All right, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. But I mean, is it? Oh, you mean, okay. Not enough if it's mine. Okay, chat is wasting my time. All right, so I know the formula that just works for me all the time. I'm going to just be just using it. All right, whatever. Uh, right, so... <clears throat> So if we have a board, uh, neighbors can be plus one. Uh, like again, freaking again, chat is debating me. I swear to God, uh, chat is debating me. Um, all, right, all right, so we counted neighbors and now we need to flip uh, the board, all right? So I need to flip the board. So int y zero less than um, board rows, all right? So we're doing that, and then we're going to be repeating that for x, for x, for columns, uh, for x, right? And I just do board y x backboard y x. So I'm just flipping. I could have probably done something like mem copy. I could have done something like mem copy, but I think that's enough. All right. So that should be enough. So we probably need to initialize this thing with something. Uh, we can go ahead and just do, uh, you know, board. So in terms of row, it's going to be zero, one. So let me actually draw this thing in front of me. Um, so this is going to be true. Uh, then one, one, two is true. 2, 0 is true, 1, 2. This is the glide that we're gonna have in here. All right, so let's go ahead and just, you know, um, rebuild this intestine. Okay, it's probably not gonna build, but I wanna see the compilation errors. Compilation errors, please give me, give me, give me, give me compilation errors. Mm -mm. Actually, I just realized that I build Essence on a completely different account and I just copy pasted the folder to my streaming account. 
So maybe because some of the base paths are different, it's incremental building feature kind of broken. That's why it keeps rebuilding everything. So I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like it shouldn't rebuild everything because it's one of the obvious things that you probably don't want to do. You, you don't want to rebuild everything. You want to have some sort of incremental build because Next went through so much trouble making their own build system. Why not have incremental build? That's Twitch chat theory. Yeah, everyone is a bot in here. Everyone is a bot in here. Um, I think people generally just are afraid to ask anything in the chat because I will start roasting them. Uh, but I'm a very passionate person. Like, I'm doing that not because I want to insult you or show my some sort of superiority over you or anything like that. I'm just being very passionate about what I do. And it's just like, I, I can't control it sometimes. Like, passion is something that I can't control sometimes. Um, <clears throat> so it's just like it means I care about what I do. Right. I really, truly care. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Um, so, what we get? What do we get? Um, uh, okay. So that's kind of funny. We we have a glider at least, which is not that. Uh, wait. It kind of moved, but then did it even? Ooh, I know what is fucking going on. I fucking know. We need to explicitly repaint that mother flipper. Oh my god. Okay, okay. That explains it. Okay, that's funny. Okay. Let's restart it. So Void Manager, thank you so much for a uh, tier one subscription with the message. The sorting is on fire today. Chat can be Niftok Persh. Kind of an interesting uh, word. How do you even translate that? I, I, I suppose impatient, right? So that's what it means. Fucking first try. Do, 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 do. All right, I declare a fucking success. Okay, so I really like this operating system. It's actually super cool. Uh, right, so the API is really pleasant to work with. The idea with organization of windows and tabs is also rather interesting. Right, I really like the projects that are just exploring new things, not just recreating mess that we have, uh, already in our software stack, but actually stripping all of that down and starting over, trying to see sort of like an alternative universe, right? So what if we actually had time to think through all of the problems or maybe even apply whatever we learned previously, right? How we would redesign all of that stuff. So yeah, I kind of like that it kind of tries to mimic Chrome. And what's interesting, the, the application like Chrome doesn't even have to build its own window manager or tab system just let chrome create new windows and the uh, the operating system itself will manage it just like chrome and on top of that that tab management integrates with the rest of the application this is kind of a cool idea that's kind of an interesting idea i think right so too bad that it's kind of on pause because again so if you take a look at the source code of the of essence so the last change was made nine months ago, right? So obviously Next doesn't really have time to work on this operating system anymore because it's a it's a pet project, right? So we have our own life, we have our job, we have our problems, right? So, but I wish it, yeah, uh, yeah. There's such a it has a, such a huge potential, I think. Uh, GPT, <laughs> yeah. 
or GPT. Damn, with all of this freaking AI hype, people completely fucking forgot that GPT used to mean something else, right? So it's a it's a table, it's a partition table, it's a generic or general something something partition table, right? Partition table. It's like all of these freaking fads they stole it's a guid okay so it's a guid partition table so all of these fads freaking steal very important words for us uh, from us right so ai uh, hype stole gpt uh, so the cryptocurrencies actually stole stole word crypto do you guys remember when crypto actually meant cryptography not cryptocurrencies or anything like that like every time this new fad comes in they, they steal something from our vocabulary they steal like a little piece of our soul every freaking time <laughs> anyways so yeah uh, roll your own currency exactly exactly so this is essence check it out it's pretty cool it's pretty easy to develop your own applications on it uh it would be kind of cool to maybe hack kernel of the separating system. I'll think about that. I'll look around the source code of Essence and see what we can do. Maybe write a driver. I don't know, but I won't promise anything. Won't promise anything. Uh, so thank you so much. Switch me, please, for a uh, tier subscription. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Ahu and Mr. Azuzi. Love you. Mm-hmm.